Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Galaxy Trucker, designed by Vladya Havatil and published by Czech Games Edition. In Galaxy Trucker, you and your fellow players will build your own spaceship from a pile of components in the warehouse. Once you've built your ship, you'll go on an adventure through space, where you'll face many dangers and opportunities to earn credits. A full game consists of multiple flights, each with a different size ship, and the player with the most cosmic credits at the end of the game is declared the winner. This video is the first in a series which will teach you step by step how to play the game. In this first video I'm going to teach you the rules for building your own ship. Once you've watched it, you can then go ahead and start playing, and then come back to watch video 2 later on. Give each player a spaceship board for a class 1 spaceship. This is indicated in the centre of the board. Each player also gets a pilot cabin of their chosen colour. Place this in the centre space of the spaceship. If playing with less than 4 players, put the other pilot cabins back in the box. Turn all the other components face down and mix them up in the middle of the table to form the warehouse. Nearby, place the numbered tiles equal to the number of players in the game, so if this was a 3 player game, use the numbers 1 to 3. All other game components can be left in the box for now. When all players are ready, the boldest player says go, and then everyone grabs a component from the warehouse at the same time. This part of the game is played in real time, there are no player turns. Each player tries to build their ship as fast as they can by grabbing components from the warehouse and attaching them to their spaceship. The rules for grabbing components are as follows. 1. You can only grab with one hand. The other hand must stay away from the warehouse. 2. You can only turn a component face up when it's above your spaceship board. No turning tiles over in the warehouse. 3. After you've taken a component, you can either attach it to your ship or return it to the warehouse. If you return it, place it face up. 4. Face up components in the warehouse can be taken by any player. 5. When you add a component to your spaceship, you can move it around however you like, but only until you grab a new component. At that point, it becomes welded into place and you can no longer move it. Each time you add a new component to your ship, it must be attached to one of your existing components. To join two components together, you must match the connectors. There are simple connectors, double connectors and universal connectors. A simple connector can only join to another simple connector, or to a universal connector. And a double connector can only join to another double connector, or a universal connector. Basically, you cannot join a simple connector to a double connector. Two universal connectors can be joined together. Also, a side without any connectors cannot join to a side which has a connector. Your starting component is your pilot cabin. It has space for two crew members, and it has four universal connectors, making it easy to attach other components to it. This is an additional cabin. Each of these allows you to add two more crew to your ship. Having more crew is better for the flight, so you want as many cabins as possible. Engines have special building rules. First, the exhaust port must point to the rear of your ship and the space directly behind the exhaust port must be empty. This doesn't mean that the engine has to be at the back of your spaceship. This for example is ok, as long as no component is placed on the space with the X. Ships with more engines are faster, so you want as many engines as possible. Cannons help you fight off space pirates and shoot meteors. They can point in any direction, although they are most effective when pointing forward. The special building rule for cannons is that the space directly in front of the barrel must be empty. Since an adventure through space can be dangerous, you want to have as many cannons on your ship as possible. These double components follow the same building rules as their simple equivalents, however they are twice as powerful. The downside being that they require additional power to make them work, so if you have any of these components on your ship, you'll also need some batteries. A battery component consists of either two or three E-cells, and each cell stores enough energy for one use of a double engine or double cannon. 
Batteries can be anywhere on a ship to be used. They do not need to be next to the component they're powering. To have a really good ship, you want some double engines and double cannons, which means you'll need as many batteries as possible. Shields are there for when things go wrong. They can deflect small meteors or light weapons fire from enemies. Each shield generator protects the ship from the two directions shown on the component. Each use of the shield requires one energy, another reason why you'll need batteries. During your adventure you may have the opportunity to stop and pick up valuable cargo. To store the goods you collect, you'll need cargo holds. Standard holds can store blue, green or yellow cargo. Red cargo, however, is hazardous, and to store this, you'll need a special cargo hold, which can store any type of good. Since cargo is sold for a profit at the end of a flight, you want to have as many cargo holds as possible. Structural modules might not seem very useful. However, they have a lot of connectors and can help hold your ship together when it starts to fall apart. These strange components I'll explain in a later video. For your first game, just treat them like structural modules. So in summary, you're going to need lots of crew, lots of engines to go fast, lots of cannons to protect your ship against meteors and enemy weapons fire, lots of cargo holes to pick up valuable goods, and shield generators to protect your ship. Easy, right? Once you decide to stop building your ship, you grab the lowest number tile remaining. The number you take determines the order for the flight ahead, and it's usually best to go first. In the full game there's a time limit on building, but for your first game, if you're the last to finish, you have as much time as you want to complete your ship. If you're taking too long, the other players are allowed to gently thump the box lid against your head to encourage you to play faster. Oi! After all players have finished building their ship, it's time to do a quick check on all the ships to ensure they are legal. If you have built your ship illegally, just remove the offending components back to the warehouse. In the full game, this is done differently, but for now, let's keep things simple. And now it's time for something completely different. It's quiz time. See if you can spot the six mistakes on this ship. Feel free to pause the video while you check. Okay, got them all? Let's take a look. One. This part of the ship is not connected to the rest, which it needs to be. 2. This engine is pointing sideways. 3. This engine has a component directly behind it. 4. This cannon has a component directly in front of its barrel. 5. These connectors don't match. 6. This connector is adjacent to a smooth edge. Note that these connectors on the outside of your ship are OK. However, they are exposed connectors and they increase the risk of damage to your ship. Now you know everything you need to go ahead and start building your first ship. Do that now and then come back later to watch the second video. Take care and thanks for watching.